a good Comic Con? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, yeah, just just warming up. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> Yeah, we've had a bit of a crazy season so far. The characters are dealing with blood rain and... <laughs> We're very tired. Yeah. <laughs> so have you got anything extra crazy that you're looking forward to with the second half of the season? Or are you, is it going to get accelerate and get a lot worse? Or is I'm it, actually yeah. looking forward to the season slowing down a little. Um, I think that it was really important for us right out of the gates to show that we were still committed to being a big special effects show, that it was still going to be visually stunning and, and, and recognize that because of Stephen King and Steven Spielberg that we did bring a sci-fi fan base with us and that there is a certain expectation of the show looking a certain way and having action and, um, and so I'm all for it. What I think is really nice is we sort of did that in the first few episodes and then now they'll still feel those elements but I think we get to kind of go back to looking at some of the relationships and dealing with the interpersonal stuff a little more so the audience that feels like they've been getting enough of that can actually spend some time with us and our relationships and you know and it's that sort of constant roller coaster of, of giving the show all the elements that it needs yeah. in a very short you know 42 and a half minutes yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> the show has been such a breakout hit. I'm actually from Israel. Internationally, it's cool. doing really well. Awesome. I, I, I know. What do you think the universal appeal of the series is? I think it's that it's no secret that things are kind of unstable in the world right now. I think there's a lot of turmoil, a lot of conflict, and the dome is just a device. It's a, it's a, it's a putting a bunch of fish in a fishbowl and banging on the fishbowl to see how we as humans act. Uh, we're going to have big fish that come in to try and eat the more, uh, the, the less, the, the more defenseless little fish. And we're going to have other fish that come up and defend the little fish. And so I think people, without having to experience that chaos, they want to look at these characters and say, how, would I be that person? Would I be that person? Would I be that guy or that girl? Um, and, and sort of identify with that. And I think, so I, that's why I think there's a draw to this kind of Armageddon-esque uh, material nowadays, is that there is a general feeling in the world of, of just that, that unstableness. Did you think that for yourselves though, when you came into the show, you thought, okay, I would be that character? Uh -huh. Or do you say, okay, I know I would be my character in that situation? I think you. Ne I think the truth of the matter is that you never know who you're going to be until you get in those moments. You know, I've seen. It's usually the one with the most bravado that talks the loudest and that has the biggest muscles that you would think would be the guy, and he's hiding under a table, while the guy that, that you that never said a word that you never expected steps up and, and saves the day. That's how I find life to usually be. Uh, so I think that's the. You know, we sort of provide an ideal picture of, of who those people are, but um, uh, yeah, I've, I've often wondered if I would if I would answer the call the same way. I'd like to think I would. I think that question, and also to like go back to your question, I think that, I think that question is part of what makes the show compelling, and and part of why that's an interesting conversation. Because when I first got the job and started thinking about those questions, one of the things that I that occurred to me about myself that I hadn't really thought of before was like, you know, I really hope that I'm the person who runs back into the burning airplane to pull bodies out. Yeah. What if I'm not? Yeah. Like and 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 really it was the first time I went. I've always just I've always just assumed, sort of hoped that's who I would be. But you don't really know until you're in that situation. And God knows, I don't mean to compare our network television show to people who are genuinely in circumstances where bravery and heroics are required. But I do think that universally, as people, I do think that's a question we ask ourselves: is you know, when when life when that happens, who are you going to be? Yeah. And um, and and. And yeah, and I just think that that's something that, you know, whether it's glossy and, and, and sort of sexy and people are making out and, you know, all the other things that happen in our show, somehow that question gets through. And it kind of taps you on, it kind of taps at you and goes, you know, what would you do? Um, so I think that's cool. And I like having those conversations with dance, too. <laughs> I think that's that's the definite definition of courage. You know, a lot of people think that courage is the, the, the real the fearless one. You know, the definition of courage is being scared out of your mind and going in anyway. Uh, that's
that's great. Uh, and, and, you know, I think that gets lost in shows a lot of time, is the people that are stepping up to safety, they are also scared out of their minds as well. And I'm sure we miss that at times. Yeah. It's funny, Stephen King didn't actually conceive of the show as a science fiction show. I mean, he added, when he, when he made the dome, that created a science fiction element. But his impetus for the show was he was on an airplane and he was flying over the earth and thought, we really are alone. Like, oh my God. And he was looking down going, we're alone and we're just up. And essentially the dome is the earth. And it's a microcosm for limited resources, inability to resolve conflicts, right? Living peacefully in your environment. And these were all the things that he was thinking about. And he thought, what if I took that concept about what our situation really is and I to, and I and I distilled it down into a way that I could offer to people as entertainment. And that was how the book came about. And I feel like that we're sort of trying to continue with the spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you guys. I just Thank you. Thank you.